Supervisor Cerna? Here. Kennedy? Here. Natoli? Here. Peters? Here. And I believe Ms. Frost is here somewhere. You have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Our computers are up and running again, and uh, the clock was off, and the screens were off, so I think we're back in order mechanically there. Um, our next speaker is Betty Williams. Are you here, Betty? I hear you. <laughs> oh, I don't. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My eyes are blurry, I guess. That's okay. It's been a long day, and... Um, I've been out sick, but it was important for me to show up here okay. this afternoon. All right. Um, as you said, my name is Betty Williams. I'm the president of the Sacramento NAACP branch. First, allow me to give you the true history of how the Inspector General started. When I was president back in 2007, when we had the history of the highest suicide rate in the county, more than the national average, we had inmates that were being beaten on, on a daily basis and it was being done in what we call the zero camera lens. There weren't cameras in those places. It lacked transparency, accountability, and mistrust, much like we're doing now. Let me also give you the history where we pushed so hard for an, uh, the Inspector General that Lee Dean was one of the first ones that came forward. It was the NAACP that didn't want Lee Dean because he was a retired sheriff that came, but they pushed him forward. In the interim, we had a break in that. And so that break, it was the NAACP two and a half years ago that summoned Scott Jones to the Church of St. Paul and asked him at that time, where were we with the internal, internal general? And he promised the NAACP and other community organizations that he would bring the IG back. It was after that meeting he came here and asked for the IG to come back. So I don't want you to think that he thought about this on his own. It's important for you to know the history. I started when it was Lou McGinnis, then Lou McGinnis, Lou Blanis, then McGinnis, then I, I, I come with Scott. So I came with all the sheriffs, and I wanted to make sure that we had some type of transparency and accountability. And now we're here today. Susan Peters, Don Natoli, you both know, because I've been here before, and you know this history. So when he was telling you this, I was somewhat surprised that you didn't say anything, not knowing or absolutely knowing the history. So now, we're here today asking for the accountability, the transparency, and the trust to come back into the IG. Okay, thank you, Ms. Williams. And Your time is up. I know, but it's real important, especially you, Susan, being the chair, that you hear me, because- I'm gonna give you a couple more seconds here. We, we, I still have over 100 people left gotcha. to speak. I gotcha. just wanna make sure they all get a chance. And I appreciate it. But I just don't think you, you were hearing everyone else. And, and, it for, and, and it was important for me to correct the history of McGinnis and Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Betty. Um, now, my next speaker is listed as Alan Ash, but I, uh, if you are, did you already speak? No. I wasn't sure. Okay. Alan Ash, then David Andre, then Rebecca Person. So I'm Alan Ash. I'm co-chair of the Sacramento area chapter of the ACLU. Uh, I want to start by quoting some Latin that they taught, at least way back when I went to law school. It's uh, <laughs> not a lot, please. Most of us didn't take Latin in school. <laughs> ubi jus ibi remedium. That means there's no right without a remedy. No right without a remedy. That means, for example, the old scope of services contract gave the IG certain rights for, of oversight, but even though the sheriff promised to abide by that contract, then he dishonestly violated that promise. It turns out there's no remedy to make the sheriff comply, except maybe a lawsuit. Or the county charter, charter itself in section 75 gives the county executive the right to cooperation from the sheriff. And even though the county charter is a law and it says the sheriff's failure to cooperate is willful misconduct, there's no remedy to make the sheriff comply with the law. In a strange way, however, Scott Jones' penchant for dishonesty and illegality have done the county a service. Having a sheriff who engages in willful misconduct has pointed out a big flaw in our county charter and ordinances. We have no remedy when the sheriff doesn't comply. You five 
are the legislative stewards of the county. It's your duty to fix this flaw in the county charter and our ordinances revealed by Scott Jones' dishonesty and illegality. Just creating more rights of oversight when there's no remedy for their violation is, like Supervisor Cerna said in an earlier meeting, a fool's errand. Instead, you need to put real oversight powers into the county charter or by ordinance with the Citizen Commission to back up the, in the, uh, the Inspector General, like Los Angeles County or San Diego County. A community commission lets the people really trust in police accountability and transparency, which in the end is all about public safety. When policing takes place in the sunlight under community control, the quality of policing increases. When everyone can trust and coordinate, uh, cooperate with law enforcement, we're all safer. And that's the kind of safety that's not just for the privilege, but for every member of our community. Thank you, Mr. Ash. David Andre. <laughs> David Andre. Okay. Rebecca Person. David Andre and Rebecca Pearson. Rebecca's gone? Okay. Uh, Eric Patton. Okay, I want to first of all thank Sheriff Scott Jones, who's done an amazing job as our sheriff. Um, <laughs> And you're, you're and Mr. Hear, Patton? Eric Patton, yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've heard a lot of rhetoric, a lot of heckling, a lot of slander. Um, I come to you as, as obviously a supporter of, Trump, uh, of Scott Drones and Trump. <laughs> and Trump. Uh, I'm giving honestly right. What? Right. Right. I'm saying both. Okay, obviously I have a hat, a lot of these policies. Also, my girlfriend is black, so I'm coming here. <laughs> So what I'm saying is my children will be raised in America. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Could you please be quiet? You know we're giving everybody a chance to speak as much as possible. So please continue, Mr. Patton. So what I'm seeing here is, is emotion taking over logical conversation and civility. People have been heckling, calling people names. People called, you know, our sheriff a racist. People are yelling things at me as I speak. Um, not knowing that I come from a spot where my kids will be affected by whatever policies come forth in the future. My great-great-grandfather was Judge Wills, who had uh, controlled Gettysburg, and the Gettysburg address is written in his upstairs house. So you look at America and how far we've come. The bloodiest war was the Civil War, you know, which, which freed people. Now we're here, and Scott has never, ever come across as anything but racist. My girlfriend, one of her earliest memories of the Sheriff's Department was when she was younger, and she was walking home, and a sheriff pulled up behind her. She was scared. She didn't know what to do. You know what he stopped her for? Because she was wearing dark clothing, and he was concerned for her safety walking home. He gave her a ride home so she would not be injured or hit by a car. That's the acts of our Sheriff's Department, and, and they have continued these, these shows of basically affection for everybody in the community. And when we stop having a, a, a conversation and we lose civility, we're losing fact of our ability to actually come up with, uh, with good things. So thank you, Scott. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you to law enforcement. And I really hope everybody here opens their heart and starts to listen thank to you, other Mr. points Patton. of view. Thank you. Thank you. Kian Bliss. Kian Bliss. Then Eric Weisenthal. Then Cha Vang. Kian Bliss. Sir, that's you? Okay, thank you. Wow, they come out the woodwork when Scarif Scott Jones uses the power of his office to bring out his supporters. You know, I've heard a lot of this, to, uh, this County Board of Supervisors meeting of people talking about how Scott Jones is only accountable to people who vote for him, who voted for him to be in office. So I kind of wanted to examine what that is, because it really speaks volumes to the state of our current democracy, as you like to call it. So Sacramento County, according to the U.S. Citizens Bureau, has over 1,530,000 people who live in the county alone. And out of that 1.5 million people, 1,166,000 people are of voting age, that being over the eight years of 18. Of those people who are uh, voting age to vote, over 740,000 were actually registered for the 2018 primaries where Scott Jones was re-elected. And of those 740,000 people, only 310,000 people uh, 
actually participated in submitted ballots. But basically, an election turnout across the county of 42%. And of those 310,000, only 284,000 actually participated in this uh, SAC sheriff election. And of those 284,000, 145,740 people actually voted for you. Direct yes vote. <laughs> Granted, he won 51% of that 42% turnout, but when you count the voting age people, that is 12.5% of, of Sacramento County's voting age population, which actually comprises less than 10% of the total population in Sacramento County. And yet here you are, standing in front of everybody with the gall to say, you have the support of a silent majority? What's your silent majority here? Thank you, Racists Mr. Racists who like to say black abortion matters Thank you, Mr. under Bliss. their breath in the audience? Mr. Bliss, your time Great. is up. <laughs> Eric Weisenthaler. After Mr. Weisenthaler, Cha Vang and Eleni. Galatsopoulos. Hi, uh, my name is Eric Wiesenthal, and I represent Congregation B'nai Israel and the Board of Sacramento Area Congregations together. I am a strong supporter of the men and women who put on the uniform every day. However, what I don't support are the actions of, the office, of officers and sheriff's deputies that result in the questionable deaths of African American men. No law enforcement agency should be above the law and beyond public scrutiny. I strongly support the Inspector General's office, and in particular, Rick Brazil. He understands effective community policing and is the right person for the job. And I would also add that we all most certainly can handle the truth. Thank you. Cha Vang. Cha Vang. And then Eleni. Uh, good evening, uh, Board Chair Peters and board, members of the board. If, My name if, is Cha Vang. I it, am Cha. If you could just stand okay. between the microphones, we can hear you. All right. Okay. Um, I am the executive director for Hmong Invading Politics, and I am a long resident in the Sacramento County in District Two. Um, Supervisor Kennedy. Um, you know, as a leader of my organization, I go home every night, and I think, is my community really safer? And and do we feel safe in, in the environment that we're in? And when we question to call the cops or to really take care of our own situations, like, is that really, are we feeling safe, right? And that is safety only for the, the folks who have the privilege to look lighter, have lighter skin, or do we, is safety something that all communities can, should be able to have, right? Um, and I, I talk about this because a couple months ago, a family member um, was killed at uh, a young gentleman in my family who is Hmong and black, was killed at the hands of law enforcement. And you know, the impacts are really real to our communities every day. And when I ask my family, do they feel safe? And the answers are no. And so the work that I do is really crucial to making sure that communities feel safe. And so during these times of really high violence against our communities, it's at the hands of law enforcement. It's important for us to have clear um, transparency and accountability and, and public oversight to all government uh, functions. Sacramento County um, Sheriff's Department and Sheriff Jones is, not, um, in, is no different. And you are very accountable. You are accountable to our communities who have voted for you, and we will not accept anything less than a full transparency, public oversight, and an independent inspector general that has full access to the sheriff's department. Thank you, Ms. Um, Bang. I am looking forward Final to your thought. leadership to <laughs> to rebuild and restore trust in our community, and that you will make the right decisions that will uh, keep the a law enforcement accountable to us as Thank your you, voters. Ms. Bang. Thank you. Eleni. My name is Eleni Galatopoulos. Um, you know, this meeting started out with a little bit of a civics lesson where we talked about, we were told about separate but co equal branches of government. And that means that they have to have mutual respect. 
Sheriff Jones said that he agreed with NIG, and he in fact had asked for it. Sadly, this particular IG has shown disrespect to him. The <laughs> It, it takes mutual respect, it takes dialogue. And when an IG is releasing information prior without it being done properly and due process, that shows a lack of respect. The other thing that we have to remember is that the sheriff is the only, the only law enforcement official that we the people get to elect. We choose him every two years. And when every it, four years. Every four years, excuse me, you're right. Okay. But we choose him. It, please be quiet and let her speak. Voted. Long story short, if the Inspector General is not a mutually agreed upon person, body, entity that is mutually respected by both parties, then we don't have separate but co equal branches of government. What we have is tyranny. We have one branch usurping the will of the people, usurping the vote. We all can go to the polls and change. But what I hear in this, in this room is that a small group of people did not like the outcome of the last election. This is our sheriff, all of our sheriff, and he deserves our respect. Well, if he's not yours, then you need to move. Okay. Please, please be quiet. Long story short, consequences. He's a good man. He does the best he possibly can. The board needs to show some respect to him. You cannot only ask for the will for him to be the only one bending in this. Excuse situation. me, please be quiet. Let her finish. Okay. Yeah, she's getting extra time because you talked over her and we couldn't hear her. I am okay, here I think you're almost finished, right? I'm here to simply say that it is important that this board come to an agreement with the sheriff and, sh and, I, and also expect that they will need to do some bending. Thank he's you. already said he's fine with it. Thank you very much. Sarah Ritchie, <laughs> Kate Gillespie, and Judith might be painter. I, I'm not sure. Is Sarah Ritchie here? Kate Gillespie. Good afternoon, Chair Peters and members of the um, Board of Supervisors. My name is Catherine Gillespie, otherwise known as Kate Gillespie, and I'm here to speak on the issue of transparency and accountability. I am here to support the document put forward by Supervisor Kennedy amending the contract that you have with the OIG, your basic contract, as well as to speak for the role of the, the Inspector General. <clears throat> I think it's really important to focus on what transparency means and accountability. I went on to the website for the sheriff's office looking for information pertaining to arrests. And I was curious about those instances where people are charged with crimes or have identified that crimes have happened and then when people are arrested for those crimes. I could not find data on the sheriff's website. So then I went to the California um, Department of Justice and downloaded information. And I went to the FBI and downloaded information. And I also went to the Census Bureau and downloaded the latest information from the American Community Survey. And I'll show you a summary of what that information shows. Madam Clerk. So this is data for many years. It's hard to see, and I'd be happy to email copies of this to the supervisors. So zooming in on the tables that I have, or the, um, the bar charts at the bottom. Back out again. It, it just takes time, it's sensitive. 
Ms. Gillespie, would you proceed? Yes, thank you. So what this information shows that for people of color, they are arrested at a higher rate than they exist within our county population. And, and you're over your time limit now. Okay. Uh, so if you could give us your final thoughts. Okay. Well, the important message here is that according to the data I've, I've portrayed here, nine per, um, black population is 9% of the county population. By arrest, they represent 32%. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Jude, I, this one person's name I can't read very well. It might be Judith Painter, 3918. Street begins with a B. I, I just can't read the handwriting, I'm sorry. She must have gone. Uh, Ellen Chapman, Susan Wilkie, and then Amrit Sandhu. Ellen Chapman. Susan Wilkie. Okay. My name is Susan Wilkie. I'm a veteran. I'm an elder. I can't speak for a community of people or a group. It's just my own experiences reading and living in Sacramento. And um, I know as a human being <laughs> that we tend to avoid problems until they become so obvious and so uh, so direct that we can't, we can't miss uh, having to look at them and address them. But sometimes they have to get so bad, and that forces us. But it's an opportunity. Um, and so the fact that people are critical um, to the sheriff isn't really a bad thing. It's actually an opportunity for him and us to take a look at how that position is being uh, held and the, the, the impact of it and the results of it. And it looks like our community as such is not happy with uh, what the sheriff is, is doing. And even though minorities are, of, some person said, a much lower um, a group of people and, you know, as if they weren't accountable, um, there's, they, they are a great part of our, our country and um, a lot of our issues uh, that we have are because we never address the fact of slavery and so forth. And the sheriff, <laughs> the sheriff actually, uh, that whole department um, has to deal with things that are health issues and are issues of poverty um, and housing that we haven't as a country addressed. And there we're using them to handle these problems of drug addiction and uh, alcoholism and homelessness. Um, but the sheriff said, I know the thing about being uh, voted into office. Remember, Hitler was voted into office. Just because you're voted into office doesn't mean that that, is, uh, that answers all questions. Thank you, Ms. Wilkie. Yeah. Amrit Sandhu. <laughs> After Amrit is Doug Haland and then Dave Delhart, Delhant. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Sandhu. Hello, I'm Amrit Sandhu. I am the Regional Vice President for the National Lawyers Guild, representing the entire state of California. I'd like to make five points. The first is um, that I really want to thank Supervisor Phil Cerna for his line of questioning with the attorney, because I don't believe we would have gotten to the, the most important and essential issue without that. And I'd like to ask his colleagues on the Board of Supervisors to step up and um, support his leadership. And I'd like to see that kind of questioning from everyone. Um, so that's one. Uh, two, I would like to um, speak to what I heard in that line of questioning and what I heard, and I might have the section, um, I have section 25303. I've not looked at the code myself, so um, if, it, if we need to update my testimony for form instead of substance, you're welcome to. But um, what I heard was that the repercussion for dispute here is litigation, and I think we're at that point. And the board has my support in stepping into that form of dispute resolution with this sheriff. Um, three, what I heard is that San Diego um, has a charter provision that allows the Citizens Oversight Committee subpoena power, and I'd like to see that happen here, too. 
Um, of all the examples, LA, Santa Clara, Orange, and Sonoma, that subpoena power um, from San Diego to me seems like the most workable. Um, I'd like to, um, these last two things are a little more cultural. One is that my great, great grandfather was the chief of police and that doesn't impact my ability to be objective. So people from law enforcement families, I invite you to see what's going on here in Sacramento now. And I would like to point out the thinly veiled racism when you say you want someone properly chosen with Could you give us your final thoughts, Ms. Sandu? Could you finish and your thoughts, please? My final thought is I'm really disgusted that this um, forum has felt like a civil war. I just want to remind everyone the North won, and that day is over. And um, if you could show some respect, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. D Doug Halen. After Ms. Halen, Mr. Halen is Doug Delhart and then Kathleen Willoughby. Uh, Doug Holland, uh, 4046 Knolltop Court. Um, I believe what we've seen today kind of reinforces the, uh, the image that we all have that contacts with law enforcement are emotional. Whether you're the recipient of uh, their services because you're a victim or because you've committed a crime you have a very large pot of emotion that tends to run with your memory of the event. I haven't heard anybody, including the sheriff and the various folks that have spoken both for organizations and as individuals, indicate that they were opposed to an inspector general. In fact, I think everybody says we need one. The question is, as county council pointed out, how do you define a relationship between two competing or co-equal branches, if, if you will, in a government. The other thing that struck me is inspector generals are brought in after the fact. Supervisor Cerna was asking, could they come to a crime scene? The previous sheriff said, might not be wise because you may deny justice either for the individual who shot the defendant or maybe even the defendant himself. Again, everything is done post the event. I also have the privilege of serving as an appointee to the Sheriff's Community Outreach Board. No groans allowed, please, because those meetings aren't as well attended as this You'd one address is. the board, please. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Those meetings aren't attended as well as this one is. They have a responsibility, to, as a member, we have a responsibility to bring to the Sheriff issues from the community that are of concern. But those things can be addressed before the need for an inspector general. So I guess they're not as sexy as after. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Allen. Dave Delhart or Del Hunt. Then Kathleen Willoughby and Adon Shelby. Good afternoon, I'm Dave Delahant. Um, I guess what comes to mind when I, as I listen to this today is that um, there is no argument that an IG is not a uh, requested. I don't think Sheriff Jones has denied that. You obviously haven't denied it. But I think it went beyond the IG's role, and I think that's where we are today. I, I'm in agreement with oversight. I don't think that's a bad thing. Sometimes I'd like to oversee what you guys are doing. <laughs> but that's another topic. We're here. I support Sheriff Jones. I think that I have a lot of friends in law enforcement that put their lives on the line every day. I think it's a sad that any life is taken, whether you're in a uniform or out of uniform. Unfortunately, we're in a culture today where there's lawlessness and there's hearts that need to be mended. But I don't think that, I do believe that that report was released. We have a DA for a specific reason. And it's not the IG to step out of bounds of what the, the DA is responsible for. I think you have mechanisms in place currently that would, can work without some political agendas attached to it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Kathleen Willoughby. 
Then Adane Shelby and then Lee Willoughby. Go ahead, Ms. Willoughby. Hi. So I think you already have a solution that, you ha that you're not using. You're trying to find somebody who can abide by a contract. You can write a really nice, tight contract and find somebody who can abide by the contract. And then you can also have access to the sheriff department very easily with this qualified person who can abide by a contract, and that is the grand jury. So the inspector general can work for the grand jury. The grand jury can then decide, okay, there's a shooting, so we're going to go there, we're going to take the inspector general, we're all gonna go and we're gonna do whatever we need to do, we're gonna look at documents, we're gonna review, cameras, whatever you need to do, and that way you have access and the sheriff can't say, no, you can't come in because the grand jury can go in. That is your solution. You just write a tight contract, you find somebody who can uh, abide by a contract, you put it under the grand jury, the grand jury votes, they go over and, and do whatever they need to do. That's the way you have a solution already in front of you. All you have to do is just do it. And I already talked to your uh, county council and she agreed that that is an option. I talked to Don Natoli, he said that is an option. So just write a good contract, find somebody, and then submit it to the grand jury. The grand jury will take the IG wherever he needs to go. They sit for a whole year. They, they can convene in an hour. It's easy. I was on the grand jury and I saw a lot of things I didn't like, but that's your solution right there. And then you can write an ordinance later and uh, come up with whatever you like that is a, akin to San Diego or Los Angeles or whatever. That's your solution. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Kathleen. Adana Shelby. I am. My name is Adana Shelby. I'm here on the behalf of Tayon Shelby, who was murdered on April 19, 2016. The reason why I'm here is because I'm not I'm not happy with none of y'all. I'm gonna be honest. I have I'm in Patrick Kennedy's district. I've been to him. I've been to the district attorney. I've talked to Scott Jones. Sent him letters, and still I have no accountability. I don't have a police report. The only legal document I have is a coroner's report that states that my son had fallopian tubes, ovaries, uterus and testicles that were untouched. So that tells me that I needed to do my own investigation because obviously the sheriff's department did not do that. So I did that. I went to Kaiser and I pulled all of the records, all 120 pages of them. And you know what it told me? That the coroner's report that I had from the county of Sacramento was fraudulent. Now when I posed the question of how we're gonna rectify this buffoonery, I was told, oh, we'll send this to the, the coroner. Why? They're the one who fraudulently messed up the doggone report. So I, need, I just want somebody to fix it. Now I came to Kennedy and I asked, can somebody fix this? This is going on three years. I think we need to just clean house. Because obviously we got, some, we got some blockages up in here. We need a social enema to just clean it all out. I'm tired. My son was murdered. Murdered. But yet, I'm supposed to be calm. Part of the sheriff's department, I'm too aggressive. Well, how the hell would you be when your baby is laying on the ground? Yes. How would you feel if your son is laying in a car with very little blood, but they say he shot himself, but no gunpowder residue on his hands? You tell me, how would you feel? Would you be angry like me? Because I'm so angry. But I just want to know, what is the board of supervisors? What are you going to do? How are we going to fix this for our community? Because I'm not the only family out there with the same issue. I know I'm not. But still, I have no answers. I need answers. We, as a community, need answers. Answers to this growing problem that is not getting fixed. Thank you, Ms. Shelby. <laughs> Lee Willoughby. Is Lee Willoughby still here? Serve answers. We need answers. Okay. 
Daniela Urban, then Addie Ellis, or Dr. Addie Ellis, and um, Heather Gonzalez. Daniela Urban, here. Dr. Addie Ellis. Good evening, Dr. Ellis. Good evening. I am Dr. Addie Ellis. I am in the Chair's District. First, I really want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this today. I know that we've had lots of testimony. And in an effort not to be redundant, I want to share just a few of the themes that we've heard. Community driven, independent oversight, accountability, transparency, and fairness. Those are the themes that have come up amongst all of the speakers. In an age where our communities are seemingly more segregated than ever, where the levels of distrust of government and law enforcement appear to be increasing, the rhetoric that would leave one to believe this is an issue of communities, specifically communities of those identified as black, and law enforcement, that's not really what our issue is. This is an issue of public trust and the availability and the ability to have independent oversight independent investigations of specific incidents involving the Sacramento County Sheriff. If we address the unspoken truth, the data shows that no matter racial background, socioeconomics, all people are impacted by the actions of law enforcement. If we delve into the data diff even more deeply, we know that disproportionately those identified as black throughout the United States, really frankly throughout the world, we are disproportionately impacted by issues of law enforcement. Through his actions, the sheriff has contributed to the illusion that law enforcement is inadequate, inefficient, and ill-equipped to work with communities of color. The position of the Inspector General was created as an independent body. I strongly urge you to consider all your options. And I would like to close with this quote. We look forward to working with the Inspector General to help us to continue to bring oversight and accountability to the work of protecting public safety. The Office of the Inspector General will operate transparently and help maintain trust between our office and the public. I welcome the independent oversight of the Sheriff's Department. Not only the how, but the perception of how we do things is important. Sheriff Scott Jones, November 2015. Thank you. Heather Gonzalez. And then Mahmoud Zaria. After Heather is Mahmoud Zaria and then Paul Curtis. Evening. Good evening. Ms. Gonzalez. My name is Heather Gonzalez and I'm here in solidarity with Bawapa, Black Lives Matter Sacramento and the rest of the community that came here to um, hold Scott Jones accountable. I'm a resident of the Foothill Farms North Highlands neighborhood and I come before the board today as a concerned citizen who is seeking to address the reckless, murderous, and unethical behavior of Sheriff Scott Jones. Today we are calling for rigorous continued independent supervision and oversight of the Sheriff Department with immediate consequences for his willful misconduct. Sheriff Scott Jones has impeded on the Inspector General's ability to investigate matters relative to officer-involved shootings the use of excessive force, and in custody deaths. A mental health crisis is not cause for death. Throwing rocks is not cause for death. Being a person of color is not cause for death. Show me that I'm wrong. The issues and that we're discussing are life and death for our communities and the people that you serve. How many more names do we have to lift? How many fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, neighbors, and friends must we bury before we address these issues? This board has a moral and ethical duty and obligation to address and remedy the recent willful misconduct of Sheriff Scott Jones for obstructing the Inspector General and from doing his job from overseeing critical incidents. It's imperative that we close the gaps in policy and to change the language of the Sacramento County Charter so that our current sheriff and our future sheriffs to come cannot bastardize and manipulate the loopholes to serve their own agenda. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. 
The Sacramento County Charter Provision, Section 75, provides that elected officers shall cooperate with the Board of Supervisors to an end that completes their services. However, Section 75's duty of cooperation is without subsequent charter remedy for an officer's lack of compliance. Currently, there's no specified enforcing body charged with the power to remedy the lack of compliance and no outlined consequences. The scope of supervision needs to be immediately revisited and clearly defined with emphasis on a remedy to specific and clear consequences for a rogue elected official. Give us your official. final thoughts, Ms. Gonzalez. Yeah, I would also like to request for there to be a community-led review panel effective um, as soon as possible so that we can have even more oversight. Thank you. Thank you very Mahmoud much. Zaria. Hello, my name is Mahmoud Zahria. I am the policy coordinator for CARE Sacramento, the Council on American Islamic Relations. I'm also on the advocacy board of the Field Network and a member of the Sacramento Immigration Coalition. I don't know if y'all remember me, but I want to thank you first um, for taking into consideration the Truth and Values Act, and I'm glad we're gonna have a meeting about that soon. So earlier today, it's been a few hours, so thank you everyone for being here and staying through. Earlier today, Sheriff Scott Jones said, or he believed that he's above the law because he's elected by the people. And therefore, oversight would not, would be impending on our fundamental values. Scott, do you not understand that advocacy is also a form of a fundamental right? The people are requesting for the most minimal out of Sheriff Scott Jones, and he has only shown stubbornness and disdain for his community. When we advocated against the RCCC ICE Center, Sheriff Scott Jones financially benefited from it, but he was nowhere to be found. When our board supervisors held the most recent meeting regarding the sheriff's relentless efforts to undermine Inspector General Rick Brazil, we all watched respectfully and let him share his opinions. But the moment we got up and spoke, you left. Maybe if we showed up wearing the red hats and tiki torches, then maybe you would have stayed. Now originally I wanted to be diplomatic and explain why Sheriff is incorrect regarding oversight, and I was going to use the all too common words of accountability, transparency, and oversight. But you can't be diplomatic with someone who answers to every PR request with a response, no response. I'm just gonna end it with this. My executive director, Basim Alkara, is on the Sacramento City Community Police Review Commission. And they have made great strides at providing community oversight and it has received respect, immense respect by both the community and SAC PD. The reason being because Sacramento Police Department understands that there are some indifferences Could and that they need to be heard. Could you please wind up your comments, Mahmoud, Thank please. You, because they serve the community. Sheriff Scott Jones does not believe in hearing the community. Thank you. Paul Curtis. Paul still here? No. Stephanie Haria, might have mispronounced that name, sorry. And then after her is Joseph Vallea. <clears throat> My name is Stephanie Pereira. Pereira. Um, I just wanna say first off, because nobody has said it so far, um, John McGinnis is a white supremacist. He was hired by the city of Davis to investigate a racist police incident that happened in April 2017 and he was forced to resign because he made comments on his radio show about the fact, or his opinion that black people were better off before the Civil Rights Act. So I want you to all consider that when you bring someone like that to come speak in front of you as if he has, a, uh, as if he has authority over this, uh, this topic. Um, and the fact that that's who Sheriff Scott Jones brought to speak for him, that should say something to you, and that should be very disturbing to you. Um, so I, I come here, obviously, because I support oversight of the sheriff's department. I think that it needs to be a lot stronger than the inspector general. I don't think that one person should serve, especially someone who has been handpicked by Scott Jones. I, don't, I, I know some people have said that, and the fact that he's, he has issued a report that was objective was very rare. But that doesn't happen very often when the sheriff is allowed to choose who serves as his oversight. 
Um, so I support a community-led commission that consists of people who are affected by this issue, who have subpoena power, who have investigative power. Um, this is a start, but this, it should not end here. Uh, oversight should not end here. Um, and you need to think more about that. And I do want to say, people have said this as well, but just because you are elected to office doesn't mean that you are allowed to do whatever you want. It doesn't mean you're allowed to break the law. It doesn't mean you should be allowed to get away with killing people. Marshall Miles was murdered the way Eric Garner was murdered. And you all should be thinking about that and Thank take you. it seriously. Thank you. <laughs> Joseph Vallea and Richard Stewart and Rick Fowler. Joseph here. Okay. Richard Stewart. Rick Fowler. Suzanne Giorgi. And after Suzanne is Dennis Hulett. And then Dale Dodson. Board of Supervisors, my name is Suzanne Georgie. I've been a resident of this county for over 30 years, and this is my first time to speak before this body. What I saw on the news with the lockout of the Inspector General really disturbed <coughs> me and caused me to actually start looking into things. I must have been one of the most ignorant people in this county, but I've tried to learn. I support an independent Inspector General. This community is hurting. I, I'm astounded by this hearing. You probably are used to this. This is new to me. This community is hurting. It's falling apart. And transparency is only the start. You can't have accountability until you have transparency. And there's obviously a problem with transparency. The sheriff has had years of failing to communicate with his community. Years. This has been going on and on and being stonewalled. The release of a video yesterday without letting the family know? What kind of policy exists? Where is the transparency? Trust and respect is missing. You can't have a good law enforcement police force without the community's support. They need the respect of the community and their community wants to respect them. They want to trust them. But it now needs to be earned. This trust has been lost. Transparency is a first start. A strong independent inspector general is a first start policies on that advanced technologies that you may, thank you miss georgie your time is up thank you so much dennis hewlett and then dale dodson uh, dennis hewlett from uh, district two on march 2nd of this year the SACB published an article about the death of kenton ballard this article states mr ballard was being held in the sheriff's jail a pending a, an appearance in court the sheriff told the um, B that due to the medical concerns, the district attorney authorized his release hours before he was due in court. The sheriff claims that Mr. Ballard died 90 minutes after he was released from custody. I'd like to know the circumstances of his release and his death. Was it really authorized and who authorized it? Did he really die in the jail? I don't know. If he was so ill that he couldn't attend court in a few hours, then why was he released rather than take, taken for medical care? Something doesn't add up. I submitted a public information request to the Sacramento County Sheriff. I received the following response. Documentation exists. However, all documentation is being withheld pursuant to California Government Code 6254. I then made an email inquiry asking which part of the government code was preventing him from giving me this information. No response. 
I sent, uh, uh, I made a phone message to the legal affairs department, no response. I sent a registered, registered letter to Scott Jones, no response. I believe the sheriff is in breach of the government code. I've read in the B and also heard here that people have to fight legally to get him to obey the law. This sheriff is not responsive to the public. The sheriff is adverse to transparency. We need oversight of the sheriff. We need an entity where a citizen like me can go and register complaints and resolve grievances. Being elected does not mean you don't have to follow the law. Being elected does not mean you're not entitled to um, act in the view of the public. We need more, not less, oversight of the sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Hewlett. Dale Dodson. Then Malachi Seku Amen. Is Dale Dodson here? Is Malachi here? Malachi. Oh, Malachi, I'm sorry. Is he here? Oh. I see you running around up there. <laughs> then after her is Nancy Marshall and Sharon Saffold. Good evening, um, uh, Madam Chairman and members of the board. Um, my name is Valerie Williams, Executive Fellow for the California Urban Partnership, and I'm here representing Malachi Amen, our president who could not be here this afternoon. As a part of our work to build economic security in communities, we believe it is important to protect public safety as well as ensure equal justice under the law. Not only do we support Inspector General Brazil's recommendation, we urge this board to make policy changes to ensure that the Inspector General is fully independent and empowered to investigate misconduct inside the county sheriff's office. This includes, but is not limited, to removing powers from the sheriff's office to choose an independent investigator of police misconduct. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy Marshall, and then Sharon Saffold, and then Je Janeth Rodriguez. I'm not for sure, but I believe Ms. Saffold had to leave because of the break. Are you there? Oh, she's still here. My name is Nancy Marshall. I am a county resident, a taxpayer here, and a retired 30-year county employee. Um, I was here two months ago to express my concern with regard to this issue. I would concur with what Dr. McDonald and Dr. the doctor that just spoke said. One of the things that was so important is with regard to this, having outside oversight strengthens your department. Can I say that? Yeah, I can. Because I came from a department that had 20 years worth of oversight. Did I always like it? No. Bye, Jones. Not going to stay. Um, did I always like it? No. But what happened? I'll wait till. Excuse me, uh, Nancy is speaking here. Could we please be quiet and let her speak? Excuse me, go ahead. Um, I called your offices repeatedly to express my concerns at the action of Sheriff Jones regarding the Inspector General. He continues to say he doesn't owe this body any accountability, yet he is a county employee, he pulls county benefits, he will eventually, when he leaves, pull a pretty sweet county pension. Um, and any time a lawsuit and there have been multiples, has been settled against him, that money doesn't come out of the sheriff's budget. It comes out of your budget, which translates to the legal budget of the county and then the county general fund, if necessary. Um, openness, accountability, and transparency, honesty have been talked about a great deal. Um, it is at the heart of how citizens hold their public elected officials accountable. The county has a trust issue, whether it's believed or not. Could you give us not, your final thoughts, please? Absolutely, this is my final thought. Trust issue with communities that it serves, those who pay its salaries and pay for its services. Thus, any fatality involving any county employee, AKA public servant, 
Thank you, Ms. Margo. Should be Thank you. looked into and revered, Thank reviewed. You. Thank Sharon, you. Sharon Saffold. <laughs> then Jeanette Rodriguez and Cindy Devine. Good evening. My name is Sharon Saffold. I am imploring you to keep the independent and transparency of the Inspector General's office uh, by renewing the contract with Rick Brazil and ensuring that he has complete access to the Sheriff's Departments and personnel. The, the community can only be assured that the agency that we entrust to keep law and order in our community has an independent process to ensure that when critical incidents occur, and they will, there is a process for oversight and accountability. The recommendations made by the Inspector General are reasonable and are things to ensure the safety of officers as well as the community who would not want this. Thank you. Sure. Jeanette? After Jeanette, there's Cindy Devine and then Henry Harry. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, looking at the um, values, vision, and mission statement from the post on the Sheriff's website, I see a lot of common themes. They're to protect and serve our diverse community to the best of their ability. They want to serve us with concern. If that's true, then be open to review and improvements. They want to treat all with candor, empathy, and respect. Be accountable to the public trust. I hear accountability and trust a lot this evening. Develop strength through partnerships and collaboration. Lead through exemplary conduct, appearance, demeanor. How about barring Rick Brazil? Is that uh, leading through a proper demeanor and exemplary conduct? Strive for excellence through all self-improvement, education, and training. If true, then be open and welcome review and improvements via the IG. Serve with honesty, loyalty, and integrity. Recognize the legacy created by our actions. What is the legacy as a result of his actions with Rick Brazil? I support law enforcement through and through. I honor and respect those who wear the badge and always will. I'm disappointed, though, in Scott Jones' egregious behavior, perhaps more concerning, his cavalier, complacent, arrogant, and apathetic attitude and demeanor. As a leader, Scott Jones um, sets the tone. If he's allowed to get away with his recent behavior regarding the IG investigation, then his department staff may feel that they, too, are exempt from being held accountable for their or concerning actions. A culture of above the law for any organization or agency is a very concerning, dangerous, slippery slope, especially those who carry firearms. As our supervisors, you owe us the due process to hold Sheriff Jones accountable for his actions and hopefully come to the right conclusion. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Before you start, Ms. Devine, I just want to say I still have over 50 people who signed up to speak. So any uh, work you can make towards Tightening up your remarks and reducing the amount of time, I think, would help all of us uh, move forward to the point where we can make a decision. Good afternoon. Thank My you. name is Janeth Rodriguez. I am the chair of the Sacramento Immigration Coalition. And I come before you because the last recent years have been concerning, to say the least, as it relates I'm sorry, to. Are you, are you here for Cindy Devine? No, I am Janeth Rodriguez. She oh, was, uh, sorry. I think, Cindy. Um, so I come before you because the last several years have been concerning, to say the least, as they relate to the oversight or lack thereof of the sheriff. A major concern has been a lack of response when the public has requested information from the sheriff's office. The response has continually been insufficient, and as a public figure in an elected office, this is really concerning. As a citizen in this county, it is concerning that Sheriff Jones behaves as if he has no oversight is accountable to no one and can continue to run the sheriff's department without having any or being held responsible for the ways in which the department treats the public or those who are in detention. One of the most recent requests made to the sheriff's de department was from one of the partners of the Sacramento Immigration Coalition, Step Up. You heard one of those folks speak up earlier tonight. I'm going to be brief because I know that there's a number of other people who still have to speak. Specifically, we wanted to know how the Sheriff's Department was interacting with ICE because we knew it had been happening. The department had a contract with ICE and had had one for a number of years. The response from the Sheriff's Department after several months was that no responsive documentation exists and to please contact ICE to request this data. This response was after the department requested that the original PRA be condensed to capture less items. As it pertains to the current contract up for consideration for the Office of Inspector General, I ask you all sitting behind the dais what your responsibility is to, to the citizens of this county. The public deserves a sheriff's department that can be held accountable and that shows transparency for protecting the lives of the citizens in the county. 
The lack of cooperation by the sheriff in previous instances with the OIG demonstrates his unwillingness to be held accountable by anyone. This stands in clear contradiction that the public, the, what the public officials are beholden to, to the public. How can that be when one Would of the you give us your final comment, Ms. Rodriguez? Is in this county refuses to be transparent about what goes on in his department. Thank you. Cindy Devine. Oh, well, she must have turned in her sheet more than once. Henry Harry and then Caroline Smith. Carolyn Smith. Good afternoon, members of the board. My Harry. name is Henry Harry. I am a community member. I'm a member of the black community, and I'm a member of the law enforcement community. And I hope that we can come together because there is a lot of pain and divisiveness among our community. But I'm hopeful that we can move forward because I've been in, in this board many times. Um, as Mr. Natoli knows, I was here uh, advocating for better and equal services in some of our minority communities long ago, and I think the Sheriff's Department made some progress there. Uh, I was before this board pushing for changes on how the Sheriff's Department spent some of its money and helped uh, vacant positions open, and I think we made progress there. I was, some of the, I was part of the, a group that supported an audit of the Sheriff's Department. This board moved forward. We audited the Sheriff's Department in 2006. Some good things came out of that, and the Inspector General actually used some of that in his initial report from you guys stepping forward. Let me say, uh, clearly I'm not anti-law enforcement, but I did not support the first Inspector General, and I don't support the Inspector General position now. No offense to anybody, I think it's a waste of money. I think our money could be better spent on real accountability in the Sheriff's Department, in which hopefully law enforcement might agree to. Because as you members know, and some people have mentioned here, we already have a board called a SOCAP. One of the members of that SOCAP said the meetings are not well attended. Many of the issues that were brought up here can be addressed at SOCAB. One of the things that I've uh, advocated over the years. Could you tell people what SOCAB is? Oh, they, I they apologize, ma'am. It's the Sheriff's um, Outreach. Uh, Community the Sheriff's Advisory Board. Thank advisory you. Board. Community Advisory Board. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I've, I've been there several times, and they made progress on the issues that I brought up before them. Uh, so, you know, I, I would encourage maybe the board and the sheriff to, uh, uh, you know, better advise people of this. And I'll wrap up with this. Um, again, so many issues that came up here can be addressed at SOCAB because there's so many people that are hurting. Uh, because I say I can support my community doesn't mean I'm anti-law enforcement. And because I support law enforcement doesn't mean I'm anti-community. So I'll, I'll just end with that. You have Thank you, Mr. a Harry. board that can be better yeah. used. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn Smith, then Susan Zimmer, and Toby Briggs. Carolyn, are you still here? Okay. Uh, Susan Zimmer, are you still here? Toby Briggs, are you here? Robert Venditti, yay, a taker. Good evening, I'll try to make this quick. I'm here more to learn than to, I don't have a strong position, but um, questions after questions here. Basically, my gut level feeling is that um, oversight is a good thing. Uh, the sheriff seems to agree with that. I was not fully appreciative of the animosity between the sheriff and the inspector general until recently. Um, apparently, some work needs to be done on the contract, and I hope that can work out. Um, what can I say? I won't take up any more time. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Hey, thank you very much. Kristen Dobbin, Kevin Mickelson. And then good Les Simmons, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, good evening, um, I'm Kristen Dobbin. Um, I think it's downright ridiculous that we're here talking about whether law enforcement, and yes, even publicly elected law enforcement, requires oversight. On my way here, I was racking my brain to think of a situation that does not benefit from independent oversight. I couldn't think of any. 
can you? Um, let alone when we are talking about a department that has the authority and regularly uses it to end life. Let me say that again, they end life. Let alone when we're talking about a sheriff who purposefully stoked vi a potentially violent showdown between demonstrators on the sixth anniversary of Stephon Clark's murder. Let alone when we're talking about a sheriff who's publicly hostile to racial justice organizing in the city. I can't think of a situation that calls for more oversight than the continued murder and abuse of Sacramento residents, primarily black and brown residents in the city and county, every few months by the people they pay to protect and serve them. Transparency, checks, and balances, contrary to what the sheriff says, these are the core values of democracy and we need them in Sacramento right now. Kevin Mickelson, then Pastor Simmons, and then Bruce Burdick. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Kevin Mickelson, and I'm president of the Sacramento County Deputy Sheriff's Association. And for full disclosure, I'm also a sheriff sergeant with our department. Um, just to be clear, I want to point out, and I've pointed this out in prior meetings, that the Sacramento County Deputy Sheriff's Association supports the continuation of the Office of Inspector General, so that there can be no ambiguity on that point. Um, I, I'll cut this down. I only want to speak on one issue, and uh, Supervisor Cerna, you brought up the issue regarding officer-involved shootings and the Inspector General having access. So in my 11 years as president, with the exception of on probably five occasions, I have responded to every officer-involved shooting. I would probably be generous in saying that only 50% of the time has our Inspector General, both the prior and the current, has responded to our officer-involved shootings. Now we wanna put the sheriff up on a pinata and whack him with a stick over and over and over again, but nobody addresses the fact that our own inspector general fails to come out to these. In the current contract before you, it says that he shall monitor, it says that he shall be notified of critical incidents. There is no requirement for him to respond to an officer involved shooting. And my question is, why is that? I'll also point out Many of the members of the audience probably don't know that our Office of Inspector General is only a part-time position. In a county the size of Sacramento in the state of California, how can that be? We have a lot of qualified candidates who are not putting in for this position because it is a part-time position. And that's something else that the association would like to see changed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Les Simmons. And then Bruce Burdick and Ken, um, hmm. Ken Iratani, maybe? I'm gonna just invite us to uh, remind ourselves, and I'm Les Simmons, of why we're here. Um, we're first, we're here for two reasons. And in my faith tradition says we battle with wickedness in heavenly places. And it also says we have to cast the devil out of wickedness and cast the devil out of wicked places. We're here as a faith community, a member of Sacramento Act area congregations, which has over 60 different churches and congregations and over 60,000 members in support of Phil Cerna, in support of Cat Patrick Kennedy, in casting the devil out of the system and bringing a new system, one of righteousness, one of dignity, one that respects uh, the decency of life. And then the second reason is uh, we're here is because people are losing their lives. I watched a video last night where a young man was calling for help. He was asking for help. He was begging for help. And when help came, it was too late. His life was lost. I want to invite the Miles family to join me in standing uh, in solidarity and to join me at this podium to address the, the, uh, you all, to remind us that uh, we're pushing for policy on the brinks of African-American males and females losing their lives. We're pushing for accountability because of lives have been lost. Hi, my name is Maureen Miles. I'm the sister of Marshall Miles, who we believe um, was murdered in sheriff custody. And um, I just wanna say that I can't believe that this topic is even up for discussion. Um, of course, Sheriff Jones needs oversight. If there was oversight, our family wouldn't still be waiting for answers about what happened to my brother. And um, 
Sheriff Jones doesn't want oversight because he wants the department to continue to get away with murders. And um, uh, that's all I have to say. We want answers for my brother, Marshall Miles. Justice for Marshall Miles. Justice for Marshall Miles. I want to invite those that are in support of transparency and accountability from my Sacramento Act family, from BLM family, from the entire community, the Jewish community, to stand in solidarity so we can see that it's more standing in support of accountability, transparency, and the role of the Inspector General and the continued role of the Inspector General uh, in this case in Sacramento County. We are the majority. We are the majority. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you, Pastor Simmons. Bruce Burdick. Is Bruce Burdick still here? Okay. He's on his way down. And then Ken Iratani and Jeff Otter. Oh, you give that to our clerk. If you could speak into the microphone, I could hear your request. Uh, would you like the letter while I speak? You could she'll be see happy to I, see what I'm talking about. Yes, she'll, she will deliver it. She's just waiting for you to start. She's going to deliver it. Yes. Yep. And can she give it to you now? And is there a is there a uh, way to project a picture? Yes. To your right, to your right there on the white space there on the. So, my name is Bruce Burdick. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Peters and Supervisor Cerna and Kennedy and Napoleon and Frost for this opportunity to speak. Um, I, I am very appreciative of the Sheriff's Department and what they do. I think they do the best they can. I'm very appreciative of all the people here are speaking out that we need oversight as well. <laughs> I very much hope that this, you supervisors will include oversight, uh, the oversight of CO2 emissions of the Sheriff's Department. We are forgetting that <laughs> as we lead our lives, we're emitting a lot of CO2. I hope that I could work with S Supervisor Cerna and go to Chair Mary Nichols at the Air Resources Board and answer some questions that I think every Californian needs to know and I'd like every Sacramento County citizen to know about our Sheriff's Department. How many pounds of CO2 per day do our deputies emit? Can those be lowered? Are helicopters really a good way to do surveillance? Could there be more surveillance cameras and less driving around in cars? <clears throat> they claim that CO2, our CO2 emissions are a threat to humanity. We have all emitted CO2 that has contributed to the forest fires. Scientists tell us forest fires are increasing because of our CO2 emissions. And we all have the opportunity to find out what we do emit. We could go to this website of the California Air Resources Board and find out what our CO2 emissions are and think about the way we're living our lives and try to lower them. Thank you, Mr. So Burdick. I hope the Inspector General might include that as okay. part of his duties. Thank you, Mr. Burdick. Thank Ken you. Iratani and then Jeff Otter. Is Ken here? Jeff Otter, Bruce Palmer, and then Sharon Obrigowicz. I'm sure I murdered that name, but so Bruce must be gone. Uh, Sharon. No, I'm here. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the Board of Supervisor. Bruce Palmer, um, Chair of the Jewish Community Relations Council. Bottom line is, we need an OIG. We don't have one now. 
And we do have a proposal that's out there. Uh, I've seen Supervisor Kennedy's language. It does provide for independent review. It may not be perfect in a lot of people's eyes, but it's something that can be worked with. And this is something that's not going to be ever perfect. It's something that you're going to have to work with. It may involve the court system, uh, but it's a structure. And you're going to obviously be involved in a lot of oversight related to it. And you put together a good public process. The public's aware. They're vigilant. No matter what you do with the structure itself, the vigilance of the public that you see here is going to strengthen the proposal over time. So, you know, I would recommend you uh, work with what Supervisor Kennedy put together. It's reasonable, provides independent review, deals with a lot of the processes. You're dealing with law that's very complex here. Um, you know, provisions for confidentiality, a lot of other things related to how you would implement this. So I think uh, this, that proposal is a good way to go because if we don't do it, then we're in impasse and we don't have anything. And thank you for being so patient and receiving this public input. Thank you. Sharon Obrigowicz, I, I may be mispronouncing this, on Goodyear. Okay, um, Sarah Caspi, Stephen McKinney, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Sarah Caspi, okay. So thank you for having this meeting, and I just wanted to say that I'm in support of an uh, independent um, invest, uh, inspector general with transparency and accountability to the c community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. McKinney. Then Dylan Tiagi and Rachel Harrington. My name is Steve McKinney, and I'm a 30-year law enforcement officer spent uh, time with the sheriff's department and most of my time with the district attorney's office. I've investigated officer-involved shootings and I retired as the chief investigator for the district attorney's office. What I'm here to tell the board is that I am the oversight for the Sacramento Sheriff's Department. <laughs> me and hundreds of thousands others like me as voters. Please give him a chance to speak. Can I go on? Yes, please. Hundreds of thousands of others like me as voters. We provide oversight for the Sheriff's Department. The Sheriff's Department behaves improperly as voters. We'll replace the Sheriff. Uh, in the meantime, between elections, the Sheriff and the Sheriff's Department is held accountable by a very ethical District Attorney Anne-Marie Schubert and, and uh, the California Attorney General. If, uh, and there's another level of accountability it's in the civil courts. So what I would submit is that there are already multiple levels of accountability for the Sheriff's Department. And I would ask you not to add another level of, a, of accountability that's expensive. Uh, <coughs> to the Sheriff's Department, especially a person that's politically influenced and a person that is not uh, elected by us voters. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKinney. Dylan Tiagi. <laughs> then Rachel Harrington and Sarah Andrews. Hi, my name is Dylan Tiagi. I live in the southern part of the county. I'm here today to say that we need more collaboration between the residents of Sacramento County and the Sheriff's Department. I say this as someone who's previous volunteer experience uh, with the Sheriff's Department in their service center off Florin Road in South Sacramento, where I took down statements from crime victims. I also say this as someone who's volunteered with groups like Black Child Legacy and Habitat for Humanity throughout Sac Sacramento. 
I'll say this, someone who grew up going to school in South Sacramento and now teaches in South Sacramento. I'm not here to persuade or dissuade the County Board of Supervisors on the matter of having an IG or additional oversight of the Sheriff's Department. I'm here today to ask everyone, all participants, in the spirit of former President John F. Kennedy, ask not what your county can do for you, but what can you do for your county. Consider enrolling in a Citizens Academy, which is sponsored by the county, where you can learn about the criminal justice system and ask tough questions. Consider volunteering with organizations like Black Child Legacy, which actually partner with local law enforcement to promote safe neighborhoods every Friday evening in Oak Park. Consider attending neighborhood watch meetings and expressing concerns you have about public safety and how you can help. As an educator, I work with youths from diverse backgrounds, often dealing with challenges such as mental illness, poverty, substance abuse, gang violence, and broken homes. As part of educating myself about law enforcement, I've been on 18 ride-alongs this year with law enforcement throughout Northern California, cities that include Berkeley, Oakland, Antioch, Roseville, Folsom, Elk Grove, and here in Sacramento. In witnessing calls for service firsthand, I noticed a few common themes. Frequent encounters with the homeless, mentally ill, and people struggling with drug addiction, which can lead to unpredictable, potentially dangerous situations. I'm concerned we're missing the big picture here. How are we supporting people struggling with these issues? As deinstitutionalization and deincarceration de gain momentum, we're seeing people suffering from these critical issues being shuffled through the criminal justice system. And if we want this to end, we need to start thinking outside the box. We're willing to pay more for plastic bags and high-speed rail, but we're willing to pay more to fund long-term mental health and drug Wrap rehabilitation up your comments, institutions. Mr. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. You. Rachel Harrington. Awesome. Pardon? It's been awesome. It's been awesome. Oh, thank you. Rachel? Hi, my name is Rachel Harrington. I currently live in District 4. I strongly support a strong independent oversight of our law enforcement and other public agencies. I encourage you to strengthen the current contract by explicitly stating that the investigator has full access and that the sheriff cannot lock them out. Also to add what will happen when the policies and contract are not followed. Yes, departments led by elected officials need to be investigated if their departments are murdering, raping, and torturing people, especially when they are murdering one group more than others. Please do what you can to protect people in our community. Thank you, Ms. Harrington. Sarah Andrews. Sarah Andrews and then Tiffany Wynn and Mary Tappel. So I don't have a whole lot of things to say. I don't know why my start. Okay. I don't have a whole lot to say. Nothing. Uh, I'm not from any organizations or anything like most of these people. I'm just a single mother in the community who have witnessed both my child being assaulted by the sheriff's department. I was just recently antagonized out here in the building with other people antagonizing my children. He's only 15. He's just tall. Um, a white woman hit my hand in the room. I did my due diligence and went to your security officers and asked them to approach the woman who assaulted me. Unfortunately, they did not do that. They came and victim re-victimized me and my children. That's the problem that we're having here. That's why we are here. We are here because Jones thinks he's above oversight. I support oversight of a community <coughs> oversight. I do feel also Rick Rigel should still be in place only because, and again, it's not because I support him, but I support the fact that he should be in place because he did nothing wrong. He did what you guys put him in place to do, and Jones did not like it. You talk about, he we talk about heckling. This gentleman over here and the whole reason that we in the audience have been heckling is because we do what we have shown been shown to do when that video was released yesterday that should not have been released he thought that he was showing transparency you thought you were showing transparency but what you mistakenly left in there was the fact that your officer Andrews, while that man please, was laying please address dead, the board while that Thank man you. was laying dead on the floor one of his officers said he looks like a freaking wet dog I'm sorry, but that looked like a strong, beautiful, black human soul that deserved to live when he begged for his life repeatedly. I watched the full 43 minute video, 46 minutes, and it was sad. It was very sad. And that, again, is why we need, we need human oversight, excuse me, oversight of the board. Um, again, I do apologize. I just am all over the place in here. Uh, you guys were also elected to do this job. He's not the only one that was elected to do it. And if- Could you wind up your comments, please? Okay, again, Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you again, Phil Cerna, for bringing us here. But John said out of his own mouth earlier that we don't even need to be here. We're here wasting our taxpayer dollars for nothing. He deserves Thank oversight. you for your comments. Tiffany Wynn and Mary Tappel and T. Whitney. Tiffany Wynn here. Okay, thank you. Mary, are you, are you still here? Okay. Hi. Members of the board, I am here in support of a strong, independent inspector general. I come from a law enforcement family. It is the single most common profession among my siblings, my cousins, my second cousins. I want our sheriff's department to be the best that they can be. But that means being willing to learn from our mistakes. It be means being willing to learn from people who might have better and different experience. It means learning from our community members what we really need. I was extremely disappointed in how Sheriff Jones handled constructive criticism that was geared towards preserving human life. That was not okay. Sheriff Jones, that wasn't okay. We should be learning as much as we can. We should always be trying to do the best, be the best that we can be. And an independent inspector general is one of the ways to do that. I also support the independence of the inspector general's office because Sheriff Jones has shown us exactly how he takes constructive criticism. His actions speak louder than his words. I know that he came to this board meeting and promised that he would work cooperatively with an inspector general if he had input over it, but his actions speak otherwise. Loss of human life is more important than the ego of our current sheriff. We need to take that into consideration. We need to strive continuously to be and do better for each other. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. <laughs> Mary? After Mary is T. Whitney and Marvin Mangalo and Kathy Creswell. Yeah, Chair Peters and members of the board, uh, I'll make it brief due to the lateness of the hour, and I don't want to repeat too many people. Um, I've really appreciated your leadership in this. Uh, um, Mr. Cerna, and um, I do support what, what you've said, and also support very much uh, Rick Brazil in the Office of Inspector General, and I also support the comments of the people speaking for the ACT or ACT group. And uh, I think we do need very independent oversight and in that it will serve to, to uh, increase the trust in law enforcement in the county, as well as the city area within the county. Um, for example, our American River Parkway has an awful lot of, of county influence on it, and that's where I often am, even though it's also within the city of Sacramento, the lower reaches. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you, Mary. T. Whitney, Marvin Mangalo. Is T. Whitney here? Oh, there here. Thank you. No, I just, getting late, I can't see as well. Then after her is Marvin Mangalo. I'm going to try to be brief because this has been a very long day. Thank you, Ms. Whitney. Um, I would say that, um, you know, the touting of the fact that this individual had, has won an election in June, um, I'm a little tired of hearing that because the situation that prompted a lot of this happened in August, which was after the election. So that lockout, Brazil's report came out in August and the lockout happened in August. That's a couple of months after the election. I think if this had happened before the election, we might be having a different discussion with a different sheriff. Um, that's one point that hasn't, I haven't heard earlier today. And I just wanna say that the loss of human life is always a tragedy when it's done in the hands of, at the hands of law enforcement, whether that's negligence or an outright homicide. My concern is that there always needs to be oversight for the small, th I mean, for, for, <laughs> there's oversight for so many things. And the loss of human life, I can't think of anything that's more important than to have transparency. You can't have accountability without transparency. And you need people that are empowered to look at these situations unfettered. Uh, I don't want to try a crime scene trampled, but I do think it's, impar that it's important that an inspector have access to everything and to have it be completely unfettered. 
in order for the transparency to exist for the accountability that, that we all want to have, for us to have that. And I think there's some holes in the contract and it needs to be shored up. And I'm trusting that Kennedy and Cerna are gonna lead the way on that and that you're not gonna allow the person who's being watched to determine how they're watched. They, he needs to be inspected, period, the end. Thank you, Ms. Whitney. Marvin Mangala. Marvin still here? Kathy Creswell? She left. She was here earlier today. Sorry. Lily Allen. And after Lily is Sonia Lewis. Hello, supervisors, and thank you for sitting through this public meeting. It has been a trial for all of us. Um, I just got audited in my professional world, and I welcome them with open arms because they, they really help me find a better way to do my job. And I think Sc Sheriff Sh Scott Jones should do that as well. It is egregious that we are sitting here talking about oversight when these atrocities are going on in our community. We've seen mothers come up here because their kids have been murdered. And we're talking about oversight, just a little bit of oversight. This is a drop in the bucket of what we need to be doing. Just as a, let, let's do this and then talk about what we need to do next, because there's so much more to be done. Okay, um, obviously I support the, the thing. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Thank you. Sonia Lewis. After Sonia is Cheryl Qualsett and then Daryl Roberts. So to address some of the supporters of Scott Jones, I'm here to tell you that standing up for black lives is not based on whims. I heard that today. This is not about a vote. It is about accountability and transparency. And I'm tired of hearing that as a, an excuse of why you shouldn't do your job. This isn't about an elected position that Scott Jones just by happenstance holds. It is about the very tyranny that Jones exhibited in locking Brazil out of his job. To the chaplain that called all of us in opposition to Jones, toters of falsehood, the facts are the facts. Jones, in this last meeting, said, and I quote, he is the only oversight needed to affect change in this county. Let's make it plain. We are here because Jones, who appointed his longtime career friend, Rick Brazil, to the position of Inspector General. He disagreed with the use of excessive force and the execution-style murder of Michael McIntyre. This is the only reason why we are here. This is about independent oversight. This is about the Inspector General, who was asked to review cases. This is about humanity. This is about divesting from law enforcement. This is about giving, not giving medals to murderers of black bodies. This is about how to ask, for, how he asked for provocateurs to show up in America, make America great and Trump hats. This is about his alliance with Nazis. This is about ICE contracts. This is about abuse. This is about terrorism. This is about a Gestapo police department with behaviors that have gone unchecked for far too long. Historically speaking, law enforcement was designed during slavery to protect property. Said law enforcement was designed to capture slaves' property. I'm here to tell you as a descendant of a slave that I am no longer a slave. And you are no longer an overseer. That job ends today. Let me re-remind you of a few names, places, and events. Adrian Love, sheriff's officer, shot him over 60 times, one officer in particular over 30 times. Patricia Hill, abused in your jail. Armani Lee, abused in your jail. Ryan Ellis, murdered in your custody. Mac Michael McIntyre, murdered with excessive force. Nandi Kane, Lewis, murdered you in your custody. Give us your final sheriff comments, officers please. going into other counties to detain immigrants and so that he can collect kickbacks on ICE contracts. Over-policing and targeting, profiting off of communities that cannot take care of themselves. Finally, want, and I would like okay, to end finally. with this, Scott Jones did not do any of us a favor yesterday by releasing a video in the case of Marshall Miles. If Marshall was a white girl looking like pretty Becky, suffering from meth-induced behaviors, wow. an ambulance would have been caused. That video yesterday was an attempt to mind fuck this community, and we are tired a of PR campaigns Thank you. that show him in a light that he is doing good for this community. You are wrong. Cheryl Qualsett. Supervisors, I'm Cheryl. Qualsett. 
My name is Cheryl Fawcett. I'm a district. I'm sorry. Kennedy. Could you wait for a second till everyone stops shouting? Thank you. Thank you, Supervisors. I'm Cheryl Qualset, uh, a, a resident of District 2. Um, I've heard a lot about trust uh, sitting here, and um, I want to say that people trust facts. People trust evidence. That's what we need to be allowed to, uh, to arrive at so that our police force can be trusted. Our, our sheriffs, anybody. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so obviously to that end, there, there have to be checks and balances. The, the sheriff department, just because the head is elected, does, doesn't mean there are no checks and balances. <laughs> and uh, we can also recall the, the sheriff, that is another check and balance. Um, let's see. The, uh, um, Let's see, I uh, just have to reiterate, we need independent oversight, transparency, accountability, and power to do something about what is found. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Daryl Roberts. <laughs> After Daryl is Jayab Badiga. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Daryl Roberts, I live in District 1 uh, under uh, Supervisor Cerna, I support every single word that Sonia Lewis just said. I hope that it is repeated. Um, I support the proposal by Supervisor Kennedy as a starting point. But I'll tell you what bothered me more than anything else, not coming down here to talk about what I think uh, Sheriff Jones did wrong, but I'll tell you this, what your men did in that 40 minute video, it bothered me, yes. and it should have bothered Darryl, every could you, could single one could you address the board, us. please? It Thank should you. bother us because what I saw happen in the policy of apprehending a black man who was in distress was he was hogtied, like an animal. Animals are treated better than that in this country. For me, 10 years ago, we had a young man by the name of Tyrone Smith who was a part of who, who ran in a foul of uh, law enforcement in Twin Rivers. He died in the back of a police car. He was hogtied. And I know Sheriff Jones remembers that because we talked about that. And we talked about the policy of hogtying individuals, putting your hands behind your back, pulling your feet up, and causing you to have respiratory issues. And then we blame it on drugs, health issues, and others. It is the policy that we should be talking about when it comes down to oversight. That's the reason we need an oversight person to look at the policies that are occurring that are wrong. Sheriff Jones, that was wrong for you men to have done that to that young man. It was wrong. Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> Daya? Jorge Riley? The truth, OG. H Jorge Riley, Rancho Cordova? I'm assuming uh, Jaya Badigan is not here. Patrick Olson. Mike Giles. Kate Von Buren. Henry Ortiz. Good afternoon. My name is Henry Ortiz. I'm a returning citizen to this community. I'm formerly incarcerated, did 18 years in prison. It was in prison where I seen a lot of the injustices that were done after reading paperwork of some of the men who were there incarcerated. Some of them were wrongfully convicted. A good friend of mine who also co-founded a nonprofit organization with me who did 39 years. There's, there, there, there needs to be accountability. If we're going to be held accountable in our communities, why can, I, can we have, hold our government accountable just like and our law enforcement accountable? And I'm not here to preach against him or 
or violence or anything because we need them to protect our communities. But if they're not held accountable and if they're doing things that are illegal criminal activities and they're not being held accountable, then, then what security do we got as, as citizens of this community? You know, today I'm more afraid to, uh, uh, of law enforcement than I am of, of my former gang member rivals, you know, because, uh, you know, even after doing 18 years, I was, I, I see, they did it for, to me firsthand, wrote to South Central five days after going out, you know, they, they lied on me and, and, and said that I was with, with gang members when really I wasn't, you know, for, for, for law enforcement to have that, that power uh, to manipulate the facts and the truths and to screw people of color, it, it's insane. We need to hold them accountable just like we're held accountable and, 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 and establish a, a new contract that, that, that stipulates that inner so, so that all parties are held accountable and we don't have to be going through this. I, I, I can't believe we're, we're, we're debating this. This, this should have been implemented from the beginning. You know, so you imagine all the lives that have been incarcerated of black and brown people, all the murders that have that, been happening, all the other corrupted things, all, all the other false charges. We need accountability, you know, and I ask you, Ms. Peters and, and your board, please hold these people accountable, just like we were held accountable. Thank you. Shay Lot, Shay Lot, it's O Lot or Delot, Shaya, Shay. Then Raj Singh, and then Tanya Paneda. I apologize for mispronouncing your name. It's all right. It happens a lot. Uh, so my name is Shay Delot, and I live in District Three, and I am here to tell you, I'm sure as you might find more important as a taxpayer and a voter, but most importantly, the need that Sacramento has to emphasize the foundational importance of transparency and public oversight in every governmental function. No matter how admirable, admirable or trustworthy a civil servant may be or pretend to be, public confidence erodes when public work is done in secret. And that's why when it comes to Scott Jones, a sheriff, he stands in front of a pile of events and decisions that break from the priorities of protecting all of the people of Sacramento. He breaks away from our expectations of the sheriff's department. And we need oversight because it is not just the case of Michael, it is not Adrenaline Ludd, it is not Marshall Miles, it is Ryan Ellis and so many more people in the community whose loved ones and never get answers or justice from the sheriff or his department when the deputies use force on them or their loved ones. It is not just promoting Eric Manis, whose behavior cost the county $7 million in lawsuits, or Donald Black, whose brutality cost the county another additional $2 million in lawsuits. It is constant barrage of events, knowing the sheriff keeps investing in personnel that hurt both our community and cost the county dearly over and over. It is not just a reluctance to release records to the public, it is his actions that the Sheriff Department chooses to use devices like Stingray technology for over nine years to track citizen phone calls and texts until a lawsuit led to a policy requiring court orders before attempting to track people. And still, this falls short of requiring the standard of requiring a warrant before. Could you give us our, your final thought, please? As my final thought, it is important that we need to remember that police accountability and transparency are a part of public sa safety and required for it. Thank you, Shay. Raj Singh. Is Raj still here? Uh, Tanya Pineda. Pineda. Shaylee Andrews. After Shaylee is Reverend Elizabeth Griswold. Leah, Shalia. Shalia, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna have my younger brother read the rest of what my mom wanted to say. She was kind of shooken up um, because of what happened earlier. We were antagonized and basically attacked by the KKK, the white supremacists here. So here we go. Yes, the people. Honestly, up, like we had no protection besides the people. Yeah, that, no security to help. I don't understand why anyone would be opposed to not having oversight. Rick Brazil has the experience, and that's why he has, why he was chosen for the position. It is very unprofe unprofessional and a disgrace to completely excuse all of his experience. 
McGinnis also mentioned something earlier about not allowing the board to take control of an elected official because of politics, but that's exactly what is happening with the sheriff, politics. The board was also elected by the people and for the people to assist in being our voice. So thank you, Phil Cerna. Scott Jones should be indicted for his unwillingness to be transparent with the community that unfortunately, unfortunately elected him. I come here to stand up for my community and show them the importance of transparency. And while doing so, people try to intimidate us and we are repeatedly antagonized. We try to remove ourselves from, okay. Well, yeah, we tried to remove yeah, ourselves to from the situation, ask for help. Well, we still have a minute, so I want to continue to speak on what's important. Um, yeah, so we are continuously harassed, and yeah, only the community is going to help. You know, these cops are not here to protect us. We don't feel safe around them. I worked at a pizza place for three years, and when they built a sheriff's uh, department right next door, the kids coming in were terrified. They didn't want to walk through the door. They ran behind their mom, three years old, screaming, Mommy, Mommy, the cops are here. How would they know that? Right, that was literally the day after Stefan Clark got killed. And they know, these babies know what's going on. The community has to come together. The community has, the community has to come forward to protect and do the job that no one who gets paid to do is willing to do. That's a good one. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> Reverend Griswold. <laughs> Reverend Griswold, still here? Okay. Imad Asaya, Mount Grove. Christina Robinson. Hi, I'm Christina Robinson, District 3, um, a youth mentor, and I am an advocate of the community. Um, my son was accidentally killed himself. Um, after we try to get help uh, from death threats and things like that. He's an actor and also in the music. And um, I was disappointed by the sheriff department when they came to my house out there in the Fruit Ridge area. Um, it wouldn't let me be in there to be, my, uh, to be with my son. My daughter, who was 12 years old, my nephew, nine years old, nephew, 16, and his girlfriend, 17, were all there, witnessed it, tried to keep him alive, and they refused to uh, take him to the hospital. They let him, he was still breathing and let him die on the floor. And um, I still go through a lot with that. But what it is is that with these prisons, um, you know, we have prisoners that are coming out. They have to go through so much to get um, rehabilitated. They have to have empathy. They have to really look at themselves. They have to uh, be um, accountable for their crime. They have to be apologetic. And I feel that the same thing should happen with the sheriff's department. I think that they should take on those rules and, and feel the same way and, you know, do something about it. And I don't like to hate. I, I, you know, I'm a loving person. I care about people. I care about the community. I respect the sheriff's department all up until, you know, maybe a, some years ago, but I, I used to, um, you know, look up to them in a sense. I had a lot of respect, but that's gone. Um, there's not everybody's bad, so I can't say everybody in the sheriff department, but that smirk that Sheriff Jones always has on his face is annoying and I don't trust it and I don't feel comfortable and I'm uneasy around it and I, he needs to go and look at himself and what he's done and what he's done to the people. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Eric Patton. <laughs> he's gone, is that what you said? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm getting multiple. Okay. L Lo Lois Kugelmas. Craig Seagull. Hello, Chair, Board. Um, Craig Seagull, District 1. America began when people of goodwill reacted to a police shooting of a black man, Crispus Attucks. 1770 was killed by unaccountable British police officers in Boston. Um, the country responded in the Declaration of Independence and its core claims is that the police and military authority cannot be free of civilian oversight. It's there in our foundational documents. It is so embarrassing that we're here. We are here because of Scott Jones' arrogance of the way he has failed this community and of this board's weakness in failing to discipline him properly. 
Scott Schoen's argument that he's elected and therefore free of oversight defeats itself. It's embarrassing. The point here is if he is as independent as he claims to be, that doesn't make him less deserving of oversight. It makes him more deserving of oversight, as do all of his actions. If his position is that the county cannot subpoena him, cannot, that he can close the door to the inspector general, then it is your responsibility as representatives of our community to do what the founders of our country did. And those folks, let's face it, were flawed. They were slaveholders. But they at least had the basic decency to recognize that you cannot allow members of your community to be killed without oversight, cannot allow rule of law to be eroded by tyrannous assumption of authority, as Thomas Jefferson put it. This isn't hard, and it speaks to the profound white fragility that we're facing. This is masked in process arguments where the most basic request, the most minimal that's before you, an oversight contract, has required this much process. You should be embarrassed. This is basic. Please do better. Preacher. Orlando Fuentes. Orlando Fuentes, and then Maureen Miles, and then Alana Arcurio. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you. Again, Orlando Fuentes, resident of District 5, Donatoli's District, Elk Grove, California. Um, I, come, I stand before you speaking on behalf of the League United Latin American Citizens, also known as LULAC. There are several councils in the area. We are a council based here in the city of Sacramento, number 2862. But LULAC is the oldest Latino civil rights organization in the nation, and we've been addressing civil rights issues day in, day out, here locally um, on a very active basis. Um, we stand here in support of the full, uh, in full support of the community that has spoken to you and expressed their outrage and concern over the behavior and uh, standards of the sheriff's office. We support uh, a strong and independent office of the inspector general. Our country is in a crisis vis-a-vis -vis law enforcement in the community. Our county is in a crisis. We need that that OIG office. Uh, we need that, it to be strong and independent. Um, this country is, um, as now this country and this county especially, uh, need to heal. We need transparency and accountability only because our lives depend on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fuentes. Maureen Miles. <laughs> Maureen Miles. Maureen's gone. Alana Arcurio. Sedalia King, or Sedalia? Sedalia. Sedalia, okay, thank you. Sedalia will be our last speaker. Okay, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Closing argument. You've got the wrap up. <laughs> okay, um, I wanted to keep this brief. Um, my name is Sedalia King. I'm the president of the Black Young Democrats of Sacramento. Um, I live in District 5, so pleasure to finally formally meet you, Mr. Notoli. Notoli, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a lifelong Sacramento resident. I was born and raised here. I went to UC Davis and came right back home and started working in politics. And um, one thing I can recognize is when politics is at play, <laughs> and it's definitely at play here. Um, what we're dealing with is something that's not unique to Sacramento. This is a nationwide issue. And California itself, and very much Sacramento, prides itself on being a leader. We lead the nation on everything else when it comes to the environment, to, um, uh, to transportation and other things. And so people look to California, and Sacramento's the heart of that. We're the nation, we're the, literally the, low-key the nation's pol policy capital. So. If the city and our county cannot get it together, then how can we expect our nation to do better? Um, so th if anything, this is an opportunity for us to lead. This is an opportunity for you, all of you, to step forward and take a leadership role in dictating how we can go about dealing with the issue of killing of, the killing of unarmed African-American men in this nation. Um, and 
it's not so much as just like us being aware that this is not unique to here. We like even our sheriff's department is aware that it is a national issue because we see them taking actions to purposefully instigate with our community and with our community leaders. And that is a real problem. And again, this is politicking and I see it. It's very clear and present here, especially when it's so purposely done when you're purposely going onto social media and antagonizing our folks, when you're writing letters directed to an individual when an organization had reached out to you. It is not fair and it's not right and something needs to be done. So if anything, I encourage you, I implore you to take this leadership role and to actually do something that's really meaningful because folks are here, like we're not here for no reason. And we, there's a real problem here that needs to be addressed. So please, listen. Listen. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, it's back to the Board of Supervisors for uh, discussion. Thank all you for all of you for coming in today to give us your opinion. Um, and we heard all sides. Uh, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, just want to start with a few preliminary comments. First of all, as charged as this is emotionally, and it should be, it's probably nothing more serious that we will do as a board than discuss issues like this. I want to thank the audience for, again, uh, enthusiasm, outrage, um, and so many other emotions, but still keeping it to a civil discussion in which uh, you provided valuable input, input to the board. And so I thank you all for that. Um, I also want to, not that uh, it's necessary, but, but I, I do want to make one thing clear and for the record. There's been statements made about uh, the uh, former OIG, our Inspector General um, uh, Rick Brazil, uh, and he's been characterized this evening as having gone rogue and, rep and, and producing a report and releasing a report um, uh, on his own or with no real authority. Um, you know, I, he, last thing that, that Mr. Brazil needs as a respected member of law enforcement in this community is for me to, to make excuses or stand up for him, um, but he's not here, and if somebody's uh, reputation is called into question, as has his on a number of occasions here, I do think that it's my responsibility to say, having seen what happened in the actual uh, release of the report, that uh, to characterize it as that way is completely and 100% inaccurate. Um, that being said, uh, as many have talked about uh, this afternoon, I have uh, in the packet uh, with the agenda included a proposal for language for the scope of work for the OIG. Now, this, these recommendations for the board to consider uh, came after not a great deal of, so just a great deal of soul searching, but beyond that investigation into what other communities are doing, uh, what other jurisdictions have adopted and have worked, uh, as well as discussions with the community. Many of you, many of the organizations that have been represented here today, uh, talking with law enforcement, uh, as well as academia in criminal justice, who I would consider experts in the matter. So it, uh, it's not in a vacuum that I made these recommendations. Uh, it was with a considerable amount of thought and deliberation. Uh, I won't go through them all. They're there for everybody who have seen by now and the board has seen them. Um, but I will make a few comments regarding why I think that this language is appropriate and why it is perhaps different than what we have seen in the past. Forgive me, I'm not nearly as eloquent as most of you. Um, the, first of all, the, the new language which I have proposed is community and board driven. Um, it has, as the sheriff acknowledged, taken the sheriff out of the process as far as the OIG and the OIG's performance and work. I think that that independence is vital and anything short of that would not be acceptable. Um, as, as I say board driven, much of it is driven by this board and I think that's an appropriate place for it to rest as this board is accountable to our constituents uh, and, uh, and, and we are the, the body that ends up 
you know, discussing these issues, be it in closed session or open or open session, uh, and we're directly responsible to all of you, and so therefore I think that's an appropriate place for it to be. I, it also reserves the board's right of subpoena power, which has been spoken of frequently. Litigation, restraining orders, access to the grand jury, or requesting involvement of the attorney general. Now, in all honesty and frankness, uh, whether that language was in here or not, that is our legal right anyway to exercise, but I think memorializing it in writing is vitally important. Uh, it does provide access to personnel, records, and facilities for the, for the purposes of independent investigation um, uh, for uh, issues regarding but not limited to uh, excessive force. And I think that's something that I've heard again and again. Uh, it also, uh, it's not just a let's look back at what happened. It's a role that actually Mr. Brazil has spoken to me many times and said that he always saw his role as looking forward, uh, not just looking back after an incident has occurred, but looking at policies and procedures to be able to avoid things happening in the future uh, which should not have occurred. Uh, this will not only help the incidents that we've heard so much of tonight, but it will also, uh, I think, address the litigation that we see before us on a regular basis that the board has the responsibility of either taking to litigation or taking to court or settling. Either one of those options is costly to the county and this position, I think, it's an it's, it's, it's important part of this, the role of the inspector general to look forward and do that. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's uh, you know, a whole bunch of words on here, but that's what uh, the essence of the proposed language and changes that I have made here today. Uh, I do not think they're insignificant. I think that they're a step forward. Uh, I also would agree with many, who, including Mr. Palmer, who said, uh, you know, this is an important first step, but it's not necessarily you know, where we end here. So is that a motion? You. Uh, are we making motions tonight, or is it yes. a workshop? We're, it's set up so that we can make a motion. That would be a motion. I'll second the motion. <coughs> Mr. Cerna? Thank you. So first of all, I'd like to uh, thank um, all the speakers on any side uh, of this issue that you chose to uh, um, stress your opinion about today. I think it uh, certainly um, helps inform this board on a very, very important subject obviously and um, uh, I know people had to really uh, change their schedules around and missed work in some cases so uh, I do appreciate everyone's patience um, you know I'm not going to belabor the points that I've made in past meetings I'm not going to belabor the points I've issued in editorials uh, I'm not going to belabor uh, refuting uh, mis character mis uh, mischaracterization of me uh, on social media, I don't think that that's well. That's what that's why we're not here today. We're here today to talk about how to um, get to a point where we don't have this meeting again, where we don't have to have this meeting again. Um, I do agree with one of the speakers that I believe it was the attorney from the ACLU that uh, looked at this incident, uh, the sheriff's actions, as uh, sort of a gift because it's now now we have a test in front of us, right? This has been tested. Uh, the reason, the only reason we're here, it's not because we have a difference of opinion with the sheriff, it's because of the sheriff's unilateral action that he took. That's unrefutable. So, um, so okay, so let's test it. Let's have a, a community discourse. Now we've had that over the course of uh, four meetings. I think um, one of the other speakers mentioned the fact that um, because we've had uh, the length of time we had since the sheriff took his action and we've had some exchanges in previous meetings, uh, the work that, uh, to his credit, that Supervisor Kennedy has put forth in the form of a proposed um, uh, amendment to the scope of services, I agree, is, is a great first start. Uh, but quite frankly, that we wouldn't have gotten to that point without having to go through what we've gone through together as a community for the last 90 days. So um, I think looking back and answering the question that was asked earlier um, about why, you know, why are we here? Uh, I don't understand why we're having this hearing. We're having this hearing because this is an iterative process. 
and uh, we're learning as we're going. This hasn't happened before. We haven't had a sheriff offer this test to us as a community and as a, as a board before, and so we're responding uh, as thoughtfully and with as much community input uh, as, as we can. Um, I will agree with uh, Mr. Palmer who uh, said that this is uh, imperfect and likely will remain that way. Uh, however, it has evolved to a place where uh, I'm becoming more comfortable with the intent of the scope. Uh, however, as you can probably gauge from my earlier line of questioning of our county council, my, my interest is very narrow here and it's very simple. It's very simple. And that is, I want to have codified somewhere, whether it's in a scope of services or a scope of services that adjoins an ordinance or that adjoins a charter amendment, uh, or is the result of having to go to court if necessary, the fact that we as a board will not have to revisit this. In other words, when we have an inspector general set, uh, set in his or her process, his, uh, his or her infrastructure to do uh, and carry out their charge, which is to add transparency to the work of the sheriff's department uh, and do and have you know adequate review, have the ability to, to do his or her job, that we're not going to have the, an instance like this again where a future sheriff uh, may say, well, you know what, I disagree with, the, with the, the conclusions or the substance or the circumstance of a review and therefore my reaction is to lock them out. I'm interested in one thing only, how do we keep that from happening again? period, right? So I think, again, this is a good first step. My question uh, for county council is uh, whether or not there is anything in the proposed language, specifically in the very last sentence of the last paragraph, that actually addresses the question that I had earlier about the IG's obligation to um, have access to uh, the officer-involved shooting scenes and whether they're, they're taking, taking advantage of that 50% of the time, 25% of the time, 75% of the time, that's not, that's not what's at issue here. It's the ability to have that access and not be shut out from that, that opportunity to, to review um, the, those scenes. So I'm asking the, the county council's office whether or not what has been proposed by Supervisor Kennedy um, will, will, in essence, pro provide that assurance. And if not, what are our options going forward to uh, have an ordinance um, conversation or have a charter amendment conversation that, that gives us the ability to have confidence in our IG that they will have always the ability to uh, to uh, visit those scenes as they're charged to do. This, again, is a matter of degree. N nothing that the, s the exec's office reviewed statewide gives a guarantee. The, the scope of service before you is between the County Board of Supervisors and the Inspector General. Some additional steps, some like in Los Angeles, an agreement between either the Board of Supervisors and the Sheriff uh, to bind, to have an agreement, to have a, a, a policy that that will be, that's where you get the teeth by agreement. Uh, this does not give you that certainty. You have assurance in it because you have the charter provision of cooperation uh, and that could ultimately be litigated or some me measure of alternative dispute resolution. Uh, you, have, um, you have positive um, authority, but I can't call it a 100% assurance. That's as far as I can go. Okay, that's fair. So um, is, is one of the instruments that could be used that would reference this scope of services that would give us the assurance especially for officer-involved shooting scene um, visitation privileges by the IG. Could that take the form of an MOU between this board and the sheriff? And then does that MOU just run with the current occupant of the office or does it run with the office? Uh, the way it worked in Los Angeles is it worked with the office. So okay. it, was a, it was a later, the inspector general was contracted and then a later agreement was executed, is my understanding, with the sheriff. So an MOU is one, one opportunity. Is, is there a way that an ordinance, an ordinance revision or the introduction of a new ordinance could serve the same purpose? The, the ordinance, uh, 
the ordinance cannot give anything greater than state law provides. And so, and we have the charter provision for cooperation mm -hmm. and the constitutional nature of the elected office of the sheriff still is going to require some agreement uh, in addition to either ordinance or contract. So if it's the will of this board, if it's the will of, or the interest of the motion maker, um, how, what, for today's purposes, how do we, how do we move forward with uh, the pursuit of some instrument that is between the board and the sheriff, not, not just the contract between the board and the IG, that basically spells out if our IG needs to visit an officer-involved shooting scene, the sheriff is not going to impede the, the progress of that pursuit. Well, just I think um, the, the way it worked um, in Los Angeles, and I, I don't mean to use that as the, uh, as the paramount standard, but uh, they got the inspector general on board and utilized that resource uh, for a recommendation to work with the sheriff for what w the best practices and the most, um, uh, the most facile ability to work and do that position. And then an MOU was the result of those meetings. Okay. Um, so I would turn to the motion maker then to um, consider a friendly amendment that with uh, the motion to move forward with the, the contract language, the scope of service languages that he's, he's worked diligently on, that uh, we also uh, bring forth at a later date uh, an MOU that uh, perhaps he and I could, could work on uh, together that would spell out um, you know, this understanding with the, with the sheriff, bring it back before this board, certainly it wouldn't be our call as two members of this five member board, it would be the board's call at some point, but we could work on it jointly uh, over the next month or so or month and a half, bring that back and have that uh, approved. Is that something that could conceptually be done? Yes. Is that something that? I just would ask you to um, more or less repeat your amendment it, rather than spelling out a date and you know. No, no, of, sure. The, the so, so would, the friendly amendment would be um, it would be to approve the the scope of services language that uh, Supervisor Kennedy has worked on, and then um, for he and I to work um, um, over the next several weeks on an MO, on a draft MOU for consideration by the, the sheriff's department that ultimately would come back before this board, and that would that would that would spell out. Uh, what is necessary to keep the sheriff from impeding uh, the IG from um, his visit his or her visitation uh, charges for uh, officer-involved shooting scenes? Okay. It, it I think the mo the maker of the motion understands. The maker of the motion accepts <laughs> that. Well, okay. I second in the motion, so I'm trying to understand yeah, it and sure. trying to um, get it down that, here. That, I, I'm that's why I was kind of asking the questions I was because it sounds to me like this does not the the scope of services language does not um, codify does not. Uh, I don't want to use the word guarantee. There are no guarantees in life, but it doesn't give us the protection that the IG couldn't. Uh, be restricted access to an officer involved shooting scene in the future. What about deaths in custody? Uh, right. So, uh, um, the, the situation is though, if, if the sheriff doesn't agree to the MOU, then. That, right, that's fine. And then we'll find that out. But, but we're going to work on that and we'll, you know, put in front of the, the sheriff at the right time and the sheriff will have a decision to make whether or not he. And you know, we invite the sheriff to work work on on, on it with uh, with us, but with the understanding of its purpose here, which I'm trying to articulate, maybe not as well as I could if it was 2:30. But um, but the purpose is uh, to give us that added um, protection again that uh, the inspector general will not be in the future locked out of jails will not be precluded from visiting officer-involved shooting scenes from doing their job, because that's what got us here in the first place. It's got to be approved by the board, whatever language it is. Yeah. Okay. So it's included in the motion now? Yes, sir. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah. Mr. Antoli? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I intend to support the motion. I want to certainly thank all the folks uh, who Many who've spoken here today, but have weighed in on this, and uh, obviously 
some divergent points of view and uh, concerns expressed, but I think that uh, um, it's, it's healthy for a community to uh, have open discussion and hopefully in a respectful manner and one that I think takes into consideration the, the concerns uh, of, uh, uh, of many members of our community reflecting, I think, of a, a much broader community. I would just say that um, one of the questions I wanted to ask, though, about was the contract and it relates to a comment that was made earlier. Uh, I understood that this position, um, uh, again, there's uh, a contract amount that would be the maximum, but, but that if there's support services needed by the Inspector General, that they're not limited to part-time, uh, because my expectation would be that in a county this size, it was said by uh, one of the uh, parties, Mr. Mickelson, that spoke, but I, again, I, I guess I never questioned that it wasn't a full-time in the event that... Uh, As needed. Yeah, that's right. Which so, is so, so there's not no, necessarily no, full-time. Yeah, right, no limitation. I want to be clear on that, uh, Mr. Gill, if I could, so... That is clear. I mean, this does not put any hours. The old had 100 hours which did give the impression of a part-time. It takes that language out as a defined budget, and it's as need be, and if there's external help that they need, it also gives us that ability to bring more help into it. Okay, and it goes to, I think, certainly some of the conversation here, and I heard it uh, uh, very early this afternoon and kind of throughout at different times, and that is the um, uh, interest in, in having the Inspector General uh, be responsive, certainly to critical incidents and whether they happen in the field or uh, elsewhere. Obviously, there's a good deal of review of information and, and investigatory uh, reports and, and access to records. That's very important as well. But uh, if the expectation were either by the IG and by this board or by the, by the sheriff or anybody else, by the community, that the IG would be available uh, to, you know, attend whenever possible, uh, you know, all the time to, to, to be called, to called out. And if that was the interest they had, then they're not limited under this contract, right? Because again, you know, I, you know I, to the testimony was given here earlier, uh, some folks have been at many, many of those critical incidents, uh, a majority of them. And if that is what the expectation is under the contract, then they're going to be able to do that and certainly to show appropriate uh, hours worked, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Ms. Frost? I just want to thank everyone for coming out and sharing your opinions and engaging in the civic process. Um, I'm pretty sure your voice and this process is the cornerstone of democracy. And I think it's great that everyone tried so hard to do it in a respectful way. I appreciate that. And I also want to thank the Deputy Sheriff's Association, um, not only for being here, but for your service, um, the service of the deputies. Obviously, our goal is to keep our communities safe. And public safety is, is my top priority for my district. It's, it's been expressed as one of the biggest concerns. And the deputy sheriffs are out there every day risking their lives to keep our neighborhoods safe. So I'm grateful for their service, and I'm grateful for the fact um, that they're doing everything they can to uh, keep us safe. I want to commend the sheriff for, your, um, for the way you've managed your department. Um, hey, you all had your turn to talk. It's our turn to talk now, please. At times, on a limited budget, during cuts, uh, trying to figure out how we can maximize our effectiveness with community development, uh, community programs, the sheriff's hot team that's addressed homelessness. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, our sheriff deputies are out there trying really hard, not just to respond to crime, but to prevent, to prevent crime. So I want to thank the sheriff and the deputies for, for their work. Uh, and I also want to um, mention a little bit about the IG. The IG was established in 2007. It was intended um, at that time to develop best practices and assist our sheriff uh, in being the best department they can be to keep our communities safe. 
our community obviously places a high value on having that independent review and um, the board has a very specific interest with the IG in that the inspector general informs our budget, informs decisions that we make in regard to budget appropriations. I support public safety. I support law and justice. I support transparency. And just like Sheriff Scott Jones, I support having an inspector general, and I want that also. I want to thank Supervisor Kennedy for providing the workable proposal that um, in writing, uh, not every one of us got everything that we thought we wanted, but all sides gave up a little bit and um, it, it proposed a strong compromise that would allow us to move forward. Uh, it's been expressed in this meeting earlier, the sheriff supports it. The Deputy Sheriff's Association supports it. Um, in, in view of the friendly amendment, uh, I can still support it. And so um, I'm, I guess I'm on record as, as being in support and I'm hoping that we can move forward in, in a way that will um, be, um, help us you know, resolve this issue and, and move forward in a positive way. Thank you. I'll just make a brief comment in that um, while the hearing was long today, I think we all learned a lot about how the um, uh, all the citizens of our community feel about this on all sides. And from looking at the speaker requests, I'd say almost every neighborhood was heard from. We had Folsom and Orangevale and Fair Oaks and Carmichael and Arden Arcade and Rancho Cordova and Elk Grove. And uh, uh, so I think we got a... a Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> South Sacramento, too. <laughs> I was thinking outside of the city of Sacramento. <laughs> but I think um, oh, you threw me off. <laughs> so I, there's a wide variety of opinion and views of the Sheriff's Department, and, and uh, uh, I, I think it was informative for all of us. So thank you, and we did a pretty good job at keeping civility uh, in, in place. And... Uh, I will now call uh, for a vote. Please vote. Unanimous vote. Okay. Thank you all. We still have a few more things on our agenda, so if you'd exit quietly, we'd appreciate it. County executive comments? No comments. <laughs> then we'll go to supervisor uh, comments. Please don't. <laughs> and then uh, announcements. Mr. Cerna, you want to wait? Take your conversations outside. Security could help us with that.
Thank, thank you. I have two adjournments today, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, first is for, uh, uh, I'm going to need your help, Daryl. Uh, Leotada Emissoni, Emissoni? Emma Sohn uh, Floyd. Um, with her loving family by her side, Leah Tata, Tata uh, Emma Sohn Floyd passed away on November 15, 2018 at the age of 76 uh, following a, an illness. She was born in 1942 and raised, she was raised in Pago Pago, American Samoa. Both her mother and father were teachers. Her family moved to San Francisco in 1961 and for the next decade, Leah Tata went to school and did jobs serving the communities of Hunters Point and Sunnydale Housing Projects. The focus of her work was to help those needing resources and support. In 1972, Leah Tata relocated to Sacramento's Oak Park neighborhood uh, with husband James Floyd, uh, Floyd Seabron, and her newborn son, Malcolm. Leah Tata referred to, was referred to as Miss Tata by friends, neighbors, and students. She continued her community service by working with the Oak Park Neighborhood Council from 1972 to 1983. In 1984, her family fell on hard times and they relocated to the housing projects of CV Circle in 1984, now known as Alder Grove and Marina Vista. It was also the first neighborhood I lived in when, uh, here in Sacramento. Um, she volunteered off and on at her uh, children's and grandchildren's elementary school, formerly named Jedediah Smith, located near the housing project, and eventually worked every day tutoring students and teaching Polynesian dance. For the next four decades, she worked with the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency to help transform many low-income neighborhoods and senior housing developments. During this time, she also served as the president of the Resident Council for 13 years, providing a voice for seniors and residents. Uh, but, it wasn't, uh, she, but she also mostly was remember, remembered and recognized for working with youth, uh, tutoring, mentoring, coaching young men in basketball even, or teaching young people uh, Polynesian dancing. Lee Tata was uh, focused on keeping young people active and enjoyed working to make life better for children and to positively affect their lives. In 2012, at the suggestion of a parent, Jedediah Smith Elementary School was renamed Leah Tata Floyd Elementary School for Leah Tata's support and contributions to the school and surrounding community throughout the years. Uh, in a 2012 San Diego Union Tribune article, Leah Tata's oldest son, Malcolm, stated, quote, she gives them a sense of love that is unavailable to most kids that come out of our neighborhood. Uh, Leah Tata Floyd is survived by a brother, four daughters, stepdaughter, and four uh, sons and stepsons. Just really briefly, thank Follow you. Um, I just, yeah, I had the pleasure of knowing Leah Tata and was serving on the school board when we renamed the school after her, and it was one of the easiest decisions I made as a school board member. Um, if there was anybody who was the heart and soul of that neighborhood of Marina Vista and Alder, it, it was it was her. So she'll be sorely missed. Well said, thank you. Uh, the next uh, individual I'd like to adjourn in memory of is uh, Mr. Aubrey Stone. Uh, Mr. Aubrey Stone uh, was president and CEO of the California Black Chamber of Commerce, the CBCC, and he passed away on Wednesday, November 28th of this year. Mr. Stone uh, was an influential leader and advocate for California's diverse business community. He demonstrated compassion through public service and investing in economic development in his community. Uh, as the president and CEO of the CBCC and director of the California Black Chamber Foundation, uh, Mr. St uh, Mr. Stone uh, advocated for many public policy issues such as the Ninth Circuit injunction against implementation of Prop 209, the urban environment, insurance redlining, the inner city impact of bank acquisitions and mergers, uh, and he led the charge uh, for new and emerging, uh, emerging markets. Uh, Mr. Stone promoted small business growth and sustainability in his community. He was the chairman of the National African American California Chamber of Commerce and also served as the California Regional Community Utilities Diversity Council, served on that council, uh, as well as the City Bank Regional Community Board, the Pfizer National Minority Business Board, the California Small Business Advisory Board, the Caltrans Small Business. Uh, small Business Board, and he was also a member of the Green Lining Coalition. He served on the boards of the NAACP Sacramento Black Chamber of Commerce, the Mayor's Economic Development Council, the District Attorney's Community Relations Board, and the State Fair Minority Council. Uh, Mr. Stone's legacy, legacy will endure through the state's only African-American-owned and operated radio station, 97.7 KDFM, serving the Sacramento region and nationwide online streaming. Uh, Mr. Stone received the Sacramento Observer's Newspaper Lifetime Achievement Award for being one of the most influential African Americans in the city of Sacramento over the past 40 years. 
Uh, Mr. Stone was born in Panama City, Florida, before moving as a child to Birmingham, Alabama, and then Brooklyn, New York. He would have been uh, a part of the first generation of, of black Americans to emerge from southern sharecropping and migrate north, uh, said his son, Mark Stone. Um, Aubrey Stone is survived by his wife, Evelyn Stone, four children, nine grandchildren, and four great grandchildren. So, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to adjourn in memory of Leah Todd, uh, Emerson Floyd, and Mr. Aubrey Stone. <clears throat> Madam Chair, if I just could, just for your adjourn, just on uh, Mr. Stone. Um, uh, I knew Aubrey for well over 30 years, and in addition to all the things he did nationally and statewide, and and uh, certainly in the region, he was active in his neighborhood as well. Lived out in the area uh, north of Highway 50 there, and uh, was was active, and but always had a he had time to uh, weigh in on a local issue uh, when when necessary, and uh, considered him certainly a, a real leader in many senses of the word, as you described, Phil. But um, a, a longtime friend and someone um, obviously we'll miss here in this community. Very much so. Thank you. I, I just wanted to thank the clerk and her staff for really making today's meeting uh, move a lot easier, uh, helping people in the lobby <clears throat> and in the board chambers and helping me. So thank you all for that. And thank you, Madam Chair. You did a good job. That was yeah, no, good easy, job. no easy task. We've all been in that chair. <laughs> massage. <laughs> I told her I would have continued it to next year if I were her. <laughs> <laughs> Smarter than I am. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you all, and tonight we will adjourn the meeting in memory of uh, Tata Floyd and Aubrey Stone. Good night. Thank you.